Hey, welcome back everybody. This video, we're gonna be talking about some best practices with C++, including formatting, comments, and a bunch of other cool stuff. A lot of the stuff we're gonna be talking about, such as capitalization techniques and just spacing techniques, well, these are often left up to the developer, but there is often conventions out there. A convention is just when a bunch of people agree to do things a certain way. So these conventions are often explained inside of style guides, which are basically these documents that explain the proper way to develop in C++. And these are less about the technical how-to and more about style, technique, and basically how to properly write a C++ program. So that's what we're gonna be talking about in this video. But first I wanted to say a special thank you to Embarcadero C++ Builder. C++ Builder is an application development environment Basically, it's going to give you everything you need to build applications. So this will include debugging as well as designing. So it has a really nice drag and drop user interface development, which will be responsive. And on top of that, it comes with a lot of tools for deploying to four different platforms, Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. It also works really well with databases and APIs. So if you're hoping to build data-driven applications and deploy to multiple platforms, check out C++ Builder. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. You can also use it for just general C++ development so you can follow along with this series as well. Now the first thing I wanted to talk about in this video is indentation. So that's just when we tab this thing over. So there's often recommendations. So for example, some people tell you to put four spaces anytime you have a curly brace. Some people say to put a tab, so using the tab character. Whichever one you choose really doesn't matter. The most important thing is to be consistent. I usually put a tab, but it looks like my editor replaces it with some spaces here. So when do you indent? Well, anytime you have curly braces, you're going to indent everything inside of it. This is purely a visual thing and it's not required, but it allows us to see what code is part of what. Eventually, we'll get to the point where we have lots of nested curly braces, and if you don't indent right, it's impossible to see where anything is. So if you have a nested curly brace, it might look like this, and you can see that that curly brace as well is going to be indented, and anything inside of this is going to be indented as well. This will come up a lot when we go into if statements and loops, because we're gonna have a lot more curly braces, and it's going to be a nested system where there's curly braces inside of curly braces inside of curly braces. If you don't do your indentation right, you're going to have a disaster of a time trying to debug your programs. So make sure you do that right. Don't be an idiot and indent your programs. <laughs> a good technique to help you write good code is whenever you type an opening thing, such as a curly brace or a parentheses, always type the closing one as well. So for example, if I'm writing a string, I'll do something like, and then I'll type the first one, and my editor actually automatically puts that second one there. That is helpful because then I don't have to worry about closing it later on. I can just focus on my string here and don't have to worry about the, the double quote there. Then you just gotta remember to put that semicolon. You can put that at first if you prefer, or you can go in and add that later. Same thing when it comes to curly braces. Anytime you open a curly brace, make sure you put that closing curly brace and then start typing inside of it. So you always wanna start with the structure and then fill in the structure as you go. The other thing you need to know is that C++ is case sensitive. What does this mean? Well, it means that if we have something with the same letters, but with different casing, it's not the same thing to C++. So for example, I could say slices in all caps. This is something completely different than slices in lowercase. This means there are a ton of variations for variables. So we could do something like this. I'm not sure why that one's blue, but it should work. <laughs> and you can see it compiles fine. That being said, it's not really recommended to have variables with different casing, unless you're following some kind of convention where you need that. But more than likely, you're going to just wanna to stick to having one slices here and not having variables with the same name but different casing. It can get pretty confusing pretty quickly because you can mix up which one you're working with. Next thing I wanted to talk about is white space. So white space includes spaces, the tab character, and enters. These are ignored by the C++ compiler. This means you can space out your stuff however you like. You can put spaces all over the place. And this is still going to allow you to compile and it's going to run the same exact way. The only thing to know is that you can't split up keywords. So for example, I can't go into this int and put a bunch of spaces there because then it's no longer the int keyword. To C++ it looks like in, which isn't anything, a t, which isn't anything, and then slices, which doesn't really mean anything here either. So you can't split up keywords and any kind of space inside of a string is going to be considered. So if we put a bunch of spaces in here, well, this is going to show up 
inside of the string. So when we run this, you can see there are a bunch of spaces here. So white space is only considered inside of a string. So I'm gonna put that back to how it was, like so. Now the next thing I wanted to talk about is comments. You can do a comment with two forward slashes. This is going to be ignored by the C++ compiler, so we can go in here and write whatever we want. Now, what exactly do you put in comments? <laughs> I'm gonna say that you should only put stuff that is necessary to understand the code that you're describing. So for example, if it's confusing what exactly the code is doing, I can give a general statement here, like so, and that's not going to affect the compilation of our program. Now, don't go over the top with comments because you always gotta make sure your comments are up to date. If I go in here and then change this code and forget to change the comment, that makes things 10 times more confusing. And as a developer, that's just annoying, so don't do that. <laughs> There's so many times I'll write a comment, I'll forget to change it, and then later I'll be confused because the comment will say something different than the code which means the comment is completely pointless and actually makes things worse. Now, if you're in school, you're probably gonna have to put like 400,000 comments at the top saying like, oh, what's your name? What class is it? What project number are you on? How many siblings do you have? What's your social security number? It gets pretty over the top in my opinion. Honestly, you're usually not gonna need a bunch of code at the top to describe the program because all of this stuff's gonna go into one larger program. It's not really adding anything, especially if you have your name like authored by Caleb Curry. Well then if you go back and change this in a team project and someone edits it, well then do they have to go in and say, oh, edit it on 12.12? No, that's stupid. You can use stuff like source control management tools, which will keep track of who wrote what code, who changed what code, and those tools should be used for your tracking, not the top of a, of a code file. You can also do a multi-line comment using a forward slash asterisk and then ending it with an asterisk forward slash. So anything between these lines is going to be considered a comment. You can use that if you need to describe things in a little bit more detail. It works exactly the same way as the forward slashes except it goes over multiple lines. So for example, in this one, if I go down to the next line, this is no longer a comment. Those are your two types of comments. Use them wisely. They definitely can help out and make code a lot easier to understand but definitely don't use them wrong either, so be careful. So I just covered the basics of best practices and style. If you want something a little bit more in depth, here's what I would recommend. This is the C++ core guidelines, which you can find at this web, oh, that's pretty long. Just, just search it up on the internet. <laughs> this is going to give you everything you need to know, and it has this guy as the author, which I'm not even gonna try to say his name, but I heard a lot about him, he's kind of a big deal, but psh, I don't even know what he did. I'm kidding guys, he is the author of C++, so he, he's contributed to this style guide, so I'd highly recommend you check it out. So in here you can find all kinds of different recommendations on how to do things. So for example, we could find naming and layout rules. And then here's an example, prefer underscore style names. If you click this, it recommends to use underscore between multiple words. So for example, if we had slices of pizza, that's how we would do that. And on the topic of variable naming, make sure it's descriptive. Don't do something stupid like S because no one knows what S is. In 10 years, you're not gonna know what S is either. Unless it's by convention, oftentimes you'll see I for a loop variable, K for similar things like that. But overall, you should try to make your variables descriptive, but not over the top where you have to type out 20 words to realize what they are. <laughs> and avoid abbreviations, they really don't help. They're annoying. <laughs> personal preference, but thank you. So that's all I got for you guys on style. Hopefully it was helpful. By following these guidelines, it'll help you become a better C++ developer. Looking back, your code won't be terrible and you probably won't be ashamed of yourself as much. So thank you guys. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about functions and how to call those. It's gonna be an in real life concept video. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And then we're gonna go back and do some hands-on stuff. So check it out. I'll see you guys then.